the heart of coastal Maine, a blend of small town charm and modern attractions. While known for its picturesque landscapes, Freeport, Maine is definitely a destination offering more than meets the eye. But they do like them big here. And at the forefront of Main Street's famed retail outlets is the L.L. Bean flagship store. General Manager Roger Diffin. L.L. Bean has been around since 1912. And since 1917, L.L. Bean has had a presence on this spot in Freeport, Maine. Popular for its outdoor gear, home, and apparel, it's the Bean Boot, which first put the retailer on the map. L.L. was a hunter, and his feet would always be cold, and they would end up getting wet. So his innovation in 1912 was basically to stitch a rubber bottom to a leather upper. So keeping his feet dry with the comfort of the leather on top. And that ultimately is what the L.L. Bean brand was founded on, is the innovation of this boot. And has it looked like that since 1912? It has. In 1924, L.L. Bean launched its iconic field coat. In 1944, we were introduced to the tote. Classic L.L. Bean boat and tote bags, designed originally to be an ice carrier. And in 1951, this Freeport store opened its doors 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. L.L. Bean identified that people that were on their way to fishing trips or hunting trips are generally passing through to the great woods in the early morning, could be 4 a.m., and he wanted to make sure that a customer that needed gear could get it. So he threw away the key, quite literally. So I could come in and get this monogrammed at 3 a.m. in the morning? Yes. L.L. Bean neighbor and also housed along Main Street is a historic inn, the Brewster House Bed and Breakfast. The Brewster House was a home built, a private residence by two Brewster brothers that are Mayflower descendants. In 1994, some Freeport residents converted into the Brewster House Bed and Breakfast. Over the years, innkeepers have changed hands and we just completed our eighth season. Dave Noel, a former New York City chef, and his wife, Kelly Delaney, a former media executive, along with their kids, moved from New York City in 2015 to run this inn, which they say has been a dream. We're certainly a place where our, our friends and neighbors love to send their family. Um, I joke that if you really don't want to host your family, then send them to us. Seven rooms make up the inn where guests can enjoy wine and craft beer on tap. We operate on the honor system and we just ask people to keep track. Give us a tally and decide how you want to settle up. Guests can take a private cooking class under the guidance of Dave. On this night, we're making pretzels. I'd like to start in the middle and kind of work your way okay. out and that'll help kind of extend that. Is that your nice way of saying that I was doing it incorrectly? Absolutely not. <laughs> Along with all this, Dave's morning three-course breakfast, including both savory and sweet delights, leave guests wanting more. When we first bought the business, we saw people coming through and they were spending one night. Now, I'm proud to say people are coming and staying for two, three, even some people stay a week. For some fresh air, we head over to Wolf's Neck Center for Agriculture and the Environment, a demonstration, research, and visitor center situated on over 600 acres of coastal land. We border Casco Bay. We have over three miles of walking trails. We're a working organic farm. Our purpose is really to contribute to figuring out how agriculture can really be a solution to climate change. Um, rather than the contributor. This nonprofit organization offers free programs open to the public year round. We do things like farmer for the morning, we have a livestock program, we also have fruit and vegetable programs, and those programs also train aspiring farmers. Wolf's Neck was a recent winner of a partnership award from 1% for the planet. Which is a global organization highlighting um, good work that's happening in terms of business and nonprofits and supporting the, the climate and environmental organizations. Freeport's main beer company is one of the for-profit businesses supporting the 1% initiative, donating 1% of their gross annual sales to environmental nonprofits. They've worked with Wolf's Neck Center since 2013 by supporting their sustainable efforts. CEO Steve Mill says the company strives to do some good through beer. We're super excited that we hit a milestone of donating $3 million to local and environmental nonprofits. Pouring passion into every IPA and pale ale, 100% of their craft brew is made on site. The thing we're known for as far as beers go is hop forward, beer is clean, West Coast style. We were one of the first in New England to bring that style here. 
lunch is their signature, says tasting room manager Ryan Connery Pullen. Lunch is named after a whale. Uh, we worked with an organization called Ally Whale, and they had spotted this whale off the coast of Maine called Lunch, and we named a beer after it. And paired with any one of Maine Beer Company's brick oven pizzas, this lunch certainly makes for a wonderful 12 p.m. meal. Cheers. Cheers. To lunch. All right, they have lunch. They also have another popular <laughs> beer called Dinner. They do. Can breakfast be far I, behind? That was a good question. And, and the marketing department is not overextending <laughs> themselves. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, back to L.L. <laughs> Bean. Big things are in store for the store. The campus in Freeport is under is currently under un, going under a $50 million renovation. And here's a fun story. Uh, the L.L. Bean boot, when it first hit the market in 1912, it was not a success. The first 90 of 100 boots were sent back. Oh. Not anymore. No, it's those iconic. are hot. And a big one up front, too. <laughs> up next, art in action.